I had hopes when I accepted the job that Syria will emerge to solve this crisis, this painful war, in a better way, in a more peaceful way. I know we are not perfect. I know the Middle East is not perfect. But at the end of the day, I felt that I'm no longer useful for my country. As a diplomat, I wanted to serve all Syrians and not one party. I felt that we are not on the right way for solving the problem. So what I did is that I just left the country and I left the letter of resignation and I left my job. I'm sad to say that. I'm very proud to be Syrian today. But I feel sorry for the events in my country. And, you know, when you feel that you can no longer give anything, so I just decided to leave. Was it a frightening thing to do? Well, absolutely. You know, things were getting more and more violent. I, you know, I don't want to make out of myself a, a star. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a simple Syrian, uh, a diplomat, who decided just to, to quit his job because I feel I, I was no longer useful for my country and I cannot bear uh, this responsibility of the blood. Can you give me a sense of what the thinking was within the foreign ministry about how this conflict within Syria would develop or might develop or could be brought to a conclusion? Look, the Syrian government offered many initiatives. What we lacked really... What we lacked in Syria is the seriousness from both sides, not only the government. Our population is 24 million. I can tell you frankly, from a personal point of view, that only maximum 4 million are engaged in this conflict in Syria. The other Syrians, like me today, are silent because they look at both sides and they don't feel that they are up to their aspiration and expectation in, in creating a new Syria. You're a Christian, uh, which may be relatively unusual in the senior ranks of bureaucracy and, and the diplomacy of Syria. So in a sense, I suppose you weren't part of that kind of Alawite inner circle. But has the religious dimension become more of an issue in Syria, in your judgment, since this violence broke out? So we never felt this uh, sectarianism. I mean, my best friends are, are Muslim, and I'm very proud of their friendship. So I don't have this complex, to be honest with you. But today, yes, we do have a problem in Syria. Minorities are being prosecuted. Not only I'm talking regime and rebel or revolution. Now you have a big Pandora box wide open. You have jihadists, you have extremist group. It's no secret. You can see on, on YouTube, you can see on news cable what's going on in Syria. So we really, we really uh, feel sorry because Syria is one of the re really true countries in the Middle East and uh, a cultural reservoir for Europe. So I feel sorry that we are transforming in this direction, in the wrong direction. Where do you think the problems arise from that led to this uprising? The notion of concession is not in the dictionary of the government, maybe, because in, in, in politics, you have to concede a bit. You have to respond to the aspiration of the people. So we, we end up in a, in a catch-22 situation. You have the revolution or the rebels. At first, it was peaceful, and after that for the known reason, it was derailed. And uh, the regime also is stubborn, and they are operating on survival mode and not reforming mode anymore. At first, it was, it was better than now. But today, everybody is looking for his own survival. Everybody wants to win. Political people may, might win, but Syria will lose. Is it your sense that the government is now looking for a resolution, or is it a question of we're frightened of losing power because we fear for our own future and therefore we will just fight to the end on this? Well, the government today is not only frightened of losing power. We are fighting many dangers ahead. You can see the fanatic groups, you can see jihadists, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra. It's no longer uh, people and government. This is where we are losing hope because it's not only two players. It's many players and each player has somebody behind him. What we really need is reason to prevail and really to have America and Russia on one same page so everybody would convince his friend to push them to the table of dialogue. The French have talked in the last few days as a result of this alleged chemical attack earlier in the week. They have talked about the possibility of using force, by which they seem to mean not sending in foreign troops but giving more arms to the rebels. Britain has also talked about that possibility. What do you make of that? I, I don't believe in arms. I believe in negotiation. I believe in political pressure with a clear vision for the new Syria and pushing people to the table of dialogue. The rebels and the regime, both, they tried for almost three years to win over each other. They didn't succeed. It's high time to listen to the other majority of silent Syrians that they want negotiation. They want peace. They don't want fighting no more. 
the, the casualty in Syria is enormous. We're talking about more than 150,000 killed by both sides. So it's high time for diplomacy, for talk. And I don't think bombarding or launching missiles will, will solve anything because Syria already is, is at war. I mean, uh, bombarding that, uh, that building or the other building, it won't solve the problem. It will escalate more. Both sides will use more power to survive. We need to give both sides hope that they have a place in a new Syria. Of course, there will be accountability. People who committed atrocity should be held accountable. But you can't say that the whole regime is evil and the whole opposition is, is evil. There are good people from both sides. They should meet and reach an agreement. They owe that to the majority of Syrians. What do you make of the alleged chemical attack a few days ago? The only way is verification. Verification is through a mechanism independent one. And we have now a team inside Syria for the UN. I'm hoping that both sides should cooperate to have free access for this team in order to, to verify this, this matter and to hold people accountable. If it is used by the regime, it is suicidal. If it, it is used by fanatical groups, it is also criminal. So we have to end this uh, uh, sanity and uh, give hope for Syrians, and then people will be pushed to the table of dialogue. This is the only solution. Any other thing, it will be only an exercise to make the, the suffering of Syria longer and longer. The regime did say that it would never use its chemical weapons stock against Syrians. It would only use them if the country was attacked from outside. Do you think now that that may no longer be the case? Almost one year ago, I did read uh, a ready-made statement for the foreign ministry in which the ministry said, through me, that uh, it, it will only be used in the event of external aggression. I don't want to talk about escalation. What I'm hoping, as any Syrian, is to see a way out of this dark tunnel. Is the outside world doing all it can? In wartime, you cannot tell anybody that you, you've done enough. They have a responsibility as permanent states in the Security Council to do more. I'm hoping they will do more. And they will do more, for, not for their own agenda, for the sake of Syria. How hopeful are you for Syria's future? I have to be hopeful that Syria will emerge eventually. We've been through a lot of crises in our modern history. This is the worst one. But I, we, we can't live without hope. I mean, we should hope for Syria.